Hello, my name is Danny Nolan and I'm the Director of Chassis Sim Technologies. In this tutorial, what we're going to be talking to, you, talking to you about is now that you've got your race car simulator and now that you've actually got it set up, how do you go about using it? And to be quite honest, what should you really be expecting from your race car simulator? I raise this because in my experience in using race car simulation now over the last 15 years, I've come across an awful lot of variation about what people were expect from a race car simulator. There are some people who expect it to produce absolute miracles that if you give it, um, if for example, you make a 50 pound spring change, you'll see a half a second barrier uh, that you should see a half a second variation in lap time. Or alternatively, you've just got some people who just love to hit a magic button and all of a sudden it does um, the same thing. Then you've obviously you've got other people who think it's completely and utterly useless and they don't want to and um, they couldn't be bothered uh, using it. Well, like with all things, the way that you use it and the way that you use race car simulation in particular is somewhere in the middle. Is, is, it lies somewhere in the middle. Before we start talking, about how to use it. I really want to give you this particular perspective about how to use lap time simulation. Lap time simulation and race car simulation and chassis sim in particular is the ultimate motorsport calculator you're ever going to get and don't ever ever forget that. And what do we think about a calculator? A calculator is a tool. For instance, you don't expect your calculator to set up your race car for you. Yes, it's a fabulous tool to help you figure out what your race car should be doing. Nonetheless, though, the calculator in and of itself is not going to set up your race car. Same thing here with lap time simulation. Now, what I've done in this particular um, in this particular example, you can see here that I've loaded a, my Delara F310 template, and I've just given it a particular circuit um, uh, to go around. One point I want to make really, 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 really clear about how to use lap time simulation, chassis sim in particular, is just remember, every lap time simulation that you're going to do with chassis sim is the equivalent of running a car through a seven post rig. And that is so, so critical to already to determine what your car can do, because well before your car hits the racetrack, you already have some picture of what it's going to do. Let me give you an example. I've got a particular wing set up here and I've got my circuit loaded and I've already run a few simulations before, but just to walk you through the process, I've selected my circuit, I go to the start button, I click on start simul uh, I click on start simulation and it'll start simulating. Now I've exported this data before, but just to walk you through the process, I'll start simulating and as we can see, I'm getting vehicle speed predictions per corner and it's telling me what to expect in terms of turn in speed, in terms of apex speeds, etc, etc. It's going to tell me approximately what I should be expecting in terms of um, my braking envelope and then it will basically tie this together. In a, and then it, what it will do is it will tie this together in a flying lap and this will be done moment and this uh, will be done momentarily. So, our lap time uh, prediction is completed and we have our predicted lap time of approximately 63 seconds. But the real kicker is, uh, the real kicker in this is the fact that previously I set up a data logging run and I've recorded this to data and lo and behold, this is the simulated lap I've just run. Now, Anyone with any familiarization with data acquisition equipment whatsoever will realize this is exactly the same data you get back from an actual race car. And this is so, so critical. But in particular, take a look at this particular, let me just zoom in on the two high speed corners here. Have you noticed something here? Have a look at this. Look at what the dampers are doing. These are two very, very highly bumpy corners. And this is the power of chassis sim in the fact that because of its transient nature, because of the fact that every lap time uh, simulation you do basically involves running the car over the same sort of bumps you had on the circuit, all of a sudden you have a snapshot of what to expect with your race car. Is it perfect? No, it isn't. But no simulation you'll ever do will be perfect. But what it does, what's so powerful about it, is it gives you 
a uh, is it gives you a very very strong picture of what to expect before you ever get to the circuit this is the powerful thing about uh, race car and one of the powerful things about chassis team is because it exports to so many different data analysis packages you can overlay this with actual race data to make sure that you're in the ballpark and and from this spin so many many different things you can use it for histograms you can use it to compare to actual driving data to instruct drivers this is the power that you have at your fingertips now going back to chassis sim one of the corolla one of the things about when you're looking at simulated data as opposed to actual race data there will be similar trends but they will manifest themselves in different ways and the way they will manifest themselves is fundamentally in, in the fact that the lap time simu in, in the fact that the delta lap times will be smaller than what you will see on an actual car now that arises for two reasons first things first just remember when you make a change on a race car a driver ultimately will react to a change rather than anticipating it now that's not that's not saying anything negative about race race car drivers at all it's just the fact that you've given the driver a change they're used to a particular setup it will take them a little bit of time to adapt to it so consequently even when you make little changes to a race car a race car driver will react to it a little bit more than what a simulator will uh, than what a simulator will just remember with chassis sim or any other lap time simulation um, package it knows what the grip is already when it's going through so consequently it's not going to overreact to the change so let's give this a change and we'll run it through so what i'm going to do is i'm just uh, 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 what, uh, uh, what i'm going to do here is i'm basically going to give it a, uh, uh, what i'm going to do it is i'm going to give it a little bit is i'm going to give this a little bit more front wing so i'll just click on that and go on okay and I'll go to start simulate. I've already done this already, so I'll just export the data and I'll click on start simulation. So, as you can see here, I'm going through. I'm doing my predict. Uh, I'm um, I'm doing my predicted lap time. And what's going to happen is that uh, the end of all this will have a simulated. Uh, will have a simulated lap time prediction. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at some actual data to see what that tells us and to show you what a good simulated change looks like. So this will be done momentarily. And so what we can see here, by making that change, we've picked up about three temps. Now, what we need to do now is basically we'll have a look at that change and let's overlay it against, and let's overlay this change. So as we can see here, these are our two simulated laps. Now, the data that we've uh, just uh, uh, the data that we've um, uh, just looked at was our change. The overlay was our uh, uh, the overlay was our actual baseline with uh, the less front downforce. And you, and here's the critical thing: take a look at the speed trace. We don't have massive changes in terms of the speed trace. That's really really critical. It's about a two k an hour change in turn one about a 3k an hour change in turn two just remember it's a wing change so it is a big change so we'll see this manifest a little bit more but have a look at this going into um uh, to turn one we're looking about a k an hour change but more importantly on the way out we're talking about a k 2k an hour now if we take a look equate that to about say a meter per second change that's about half a meter per second change give or take but you see here's the thing this as an example look at that c time plot it's of uh, comparing the previous lap to the other lap this tells you what you should what a good simulated change is looking like because just remember your simulated driver is a consistent driver so consequently what we're after is small consistent changes and i can tell you right now you know when a good lap time uh, you know when your lap time simulation package is pointing you in the right direction when uh, when two key things are matched number one the change is consistent as you can see here you also know it's a good change when it tallies to what you would expect or the corollary of that it tallies to what makes sense just remember this is a calculator it is not a magic wand but here's the upshot of it 
if you use it this way, if you always log your data to your data analysis package of your choice and you treat it like actual uh, lap time data, you can achieve miracles where you can achieve miracles with lap time simulation because I've lost count of the number of times using this approach has proven to be that criti uh, has proven to be that critical difference. Now it's not a magic wand. But if you treat it properly, if you go through and you look for consistent changes, you will find that your lap time, uh, that your lap time simulation package, chassis sim in particular, will become an absolutely indispensable part of your race engineering. And that is the key to using this properly. Again, we make small changes like we do. Uh, uh, what we do is we make small changes like we do on an actual race car. We then go through and we set up the fact that we want to make this a change. So I'll just call, uh, I'll just say front spring 950, and then I set up basically what I'd like my log to uh, what I want my log data to be. I click on start and I go to start simulation, and then I go into my data logger. I look at what my results are, and then I basically make my determina uh, I make my determination from there. My friends, if you use lap time simulation in that uh, in this in, in this regards, it will transform the way you engineer your race car.